log into Omni as a user with access to the planted machinery module. And under planted machinery, go to allocations. Go to current allocations. And this shows the list of machines that are available at a particular job. So let's say we're looking for a roller compactor. And this is the roller compactor. And it's currently allocated to G15. So let's preview that, preview the exact list of roller contractors. So this is the machine code, the fixed asset code that's available and it's allocated from the 28th of September 2016 and it's currently available. So let's say we wanted to issue this to a particular subcontractor. So let's click on this button here called issue machine. Choose the option issue to as subcontractor and then in the drop down below a list of subcontractors who have work orders for this job G15 are displayed. So let's say we want to issue this machine to Winget. We'll choose Winget and then all the work orders that are currently active for Winget are also displayed. So we'll choose the work order. If we wanted to add an attachment, we could do that. Maybe the attachment could be the walk around report of the machine or maybe uh, uh, a review or a form that we have the subcontractor sign over. So let's click on that and we click on issue machine. So the machine has been issued to the subcontractor. Let's close this window. Let's refresh and we can preview that again. And it shows that it's been issued. So the status changed from allocated to issued. We can go down here to the list of machines issued, search for roller compactor. And we see roller compactor. This is the machine code. It's been issued to Winget and the status is still issued. Let's say Winget is done with it and Winget wants to return it back to the yard. So click on this button here called return the machine back to stock. And it's been returned. So we can now go back to the current allocations again, do a search for roller compactor and preview that. And it's now available again. So once it's available, it can be issued again to someone else. Once it's issued, obviously it's not available for issue again. Now, another functionality that's available is that this machine can be utilized on site as part of site execution instead of issuing it to someone like a subcontractor or an employee. So let's demonstrate that. Go to planted machinery, go to machines. Let's do a search for roller compactor. And this is the machine. Let's preview that. We can look at the issue history here, by the way, and it will tell us when it was issued, when it was returned. And we can also look at the current allocation here. So let's say we want to record a usage of this machine. So we can go to the usage list and click on record usage. Now, before we record usage, one important point that we should remember is that we should set up a nominal hire charge. So the reason we want to set up a nominal hire charge is that when we record the amount of time that this machine has been used, we could we could use a cost, we could assign a cost for the usage of this machine and this cost will be added to the jobs cost structure so that we can get an accurate reflection of the exact direct cost that has been incurred as part of this job. So let's say we want to put 100 rupees for this particular machine per hour. So it's important to remember that this is a nominal 
higher charge and no accounting entry is actually posted. This is simply used as part of noting down what the overall direct cost of this job is. So there has to be a meter set up for this machine. Now it seems that there is no meter set up for this machine. So the meter is the reading that you have to record for this machine. So every machine must have a have some kind of opening reading and closing reading while the machine is being used. So in order to have that opening and closing reading, reading, the machine has to have a meter. So this machine does not have a meter. So one of the first things we need to do is go back and set up a meter for this machine. So the meter needs to come from the sub subgroup of this particular machine. Now in Omni, the sub subgroup, which is in this case, roller compactor, no capacity, denotes the type of the machine. So while this is the exact machine, C003, 00240198, uh, 0005, this is the type of the machine. So we need to set up meters at the sub subgroup level so that they can be used at the machine level. So let's set that up first. Let's go to plant and machinery. Let's go to machine groups. And we can find that we can do for compactor. And we'll drill down here. And this is the compactor. So this is roller compactor, no capacity. That's the sub subgroup that we want to change. So we'll click on that. And we'll go to the meters section and we'll have to set up a meter here. So let's add this, let's add a new entry and let's just put odometer. And the unit of measure can be in meters. And the rate per meter may be 10 rupees. And we can mark this as a primary meter. So save it. And we've set up a meter for this machine. So let's now go back to the machine master here. Look for our roller compactor. Click on the magnifying glass here. And now go to usage. So let's click on record usage again. And let's see if, and sure enough, in the meter dropdown, the odometer shows up. So let's record this. Let's start again on the 28th. Let's start at 10 a.m. Let's shut down again on the 28th and we'll shut down at 1600 hours. So that's six hours of utilization. Let's click on G15. That's the job that's used and odometer and the opening reading is 100 and the closing reading is 150. So 50 meters of utilization and we had put a cost of 10 rupees per meter and we'll put a note. So this is the utilization and click on save. And let's go to usage. And this is the odometer opening 100, closing 150 from 10 a.m. to 1600 hours for the job, job A. And this is the utilization. So one important point to understand is that we had used this for six hours and we had put in a cost of 10 rupees per meter. So the cost of 10 rupees per meter that we set up for this class of machines is basically the variable cost of the of utilizing the machine. So things like fuel, uh, maybe the hourly rate of the operator, those kinds of things should be captured in that cost. And the hourly higher charge that we set up here is the cost of the fixed asset itself. So things like depreciation, um, interest expense incurred for this asset, all of this should be factored into this hourly higher charge. So let's say we have used this for six hours. So then, and we've run it for 50 meters. So 50 meters into 10 rupees, that's 500 rupees plus 
hundred into six. So the total should be six hundred plus five hundred, eleven hundred rupees should be the cost of using this machine for six hours. So that can be reflected when we transfer this cost to a particular job. And if we want to, we can set this usage for a particular job scope. So uh, let's say we know that this compactor was used for a particular activity, then we can choose that as well. So we'll click on this and choose the job scope. And let's refresh that. So this is this usage record has now been linked to a particular job scope. Now let's say we want to transfer this to the cost side, the job cost side. So let's choose this usage record and the button label transfer to cost comes up and this is the number of usage records selected. So let's click on that and it gets transferred. So we can see that here, scroll down here to the actual cost and this is the actual cost. So here the usage cost is 500 rupees and that's because the opening reading of the meter is 100, closing is 150, so it's 50 meters in the that's been utilized. And we had set up, when we uh, set up the meter for this particular compactor, that per meter the variable cost would be 10 rupees. So 50 into 10 is 500, so that's 500 over here. And the machine was utilized for six hours and we had set up a higher charge of 100 rupees per hour. So that's six into 100, 600. So the total cost is 1,100. So that's the utilization. You, we, you can continue adding multiple usage records. So these are basically log sheets or trip sheets for this particular machine. And then we can keep transferring these usage records over to the actual cost so that they are reflected in the job cost side.